Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Rhode Island. And this week we're... Whip. <laughs> Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And this week, we're in Rhode Island. Right. And when you think of Rhode Island, what are the first things you think of? I think of those big, huge mansions in Newport, right? Right. Or I think of maybe Ted Turner and the 12-meter yacht Courageous racing off of Newport. But we're in Narragansett. Right. That's all That's all Newport. Narragansett has a completely different feel to it. Mm -hmm. And as they say, you can also always learn about a city or a town or a state through its food. And that's what we're going to do. We're here at... Aunt Carrie's. Aunt Carrie's. So they're very famous for their stuffies, which are stuffed clams. Their Rhode Island style chowder, which we're going to talk about. And their clam cakes. So we're going to try all of those. And we'll give a review of some traditional Rhode Island food with this episode. Should be fun. Okay, so some New England chowder trivia for everybody. There's actually three types of clam and seafood chowder. Mm -hmm. There's the traditional one that everybody knows, right? That's the white cream based. Exactly. There's also the Manhattan clam chowder that I think is pretty familiar as well. It's tomato based. Yes, and it's made famous from New York City in that area. That's why we. It's called a Manhattan chowder. Yeah, you never find it up in New England because mm -hmm. it's New York City. But then there's also the Rhode Island style. Which is very unique. In that it's used with a clear broth. And that's what we're going to be tasting for the first time ever today. Should be exciting. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get into that most unique of New England chowders. But. We also have clam cakes. And this is a good sign. Anytime you see that pure grease soak through, that's an excellent sign. And we also have the stuffies. A stuffy is a stuffed quahog. I asked how to pronounce that, and it's a quahog. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's stuffed there. And it's baked. And we've got some french fries. And so we should be set. We're going to try lemonade here for a start. So we're ready for our Rhode Island feast. <laughs> All right, Sin. Why don't you go ahead and start with that broth or that chowder? Still working on my spoon. Oh, that's really good. Nice. Definitely has a clam flavor to it. Well, it's I gotta clear. Get, I got to get all the goodies in here. Mmm. That's really good. It's sort of like a lighter version of the traditional cream broth. Clam chowder. Mm. You know, it almost feels like it has a, like a chicken broth base. It does, I'm sure it does. Without the cream. All right, well, there you have it. We knocked the dust off of that lunch. What do you think? I thought the chowder was spectacular. It was very light, but it had a lot of potatoes and stuff like that. So it would fill you up, I think. And New, are you a New Englander or are you a Rhode Islander now? I still think I'm a traditional New England style yes. chowder person, but you know, I think I could go either way. I think so too, and as a native New Englander, you can't beat the cream style chowder, but this broth was a great taste experience. Mm -hmm. Stuffies were great. The stuffies were great. Uh, the, the clam cakes were a little heavy. We had three mm -hmm. and we were only able to eat two. So we'll, we'll save one. It will save one, but uh, they were a little heavy on the, the, you know, the doughy side. Yeah. But good. I think we're gonna kind of chalk this one off as a good Rhode Island lunch. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next adventure. All right, so during our Rhode Island stay, we're staying here at Fisherman's Memorial State Park in Narragansett. And it is chock-a-block full here right now. Uh, we paid $55 a night for the site, and it is a full hookup site. You can see it's a pull-through, which made it easy, but it's kind of a little wonky in that a lot of the sites are really unlevel front to back. At least in this section. Yes. Uh, there were some other sections that were more level and more open. Right, but this one was pretty... Uh, you know, that's why it's nice to have that little uh, base that I have that allows me to take the big base off and really bring the nose down a lot, so. Yeah, this is slightly unlevel front to back, but not as bad as some of the other sites we've seen. But side to side, completely level. Right. It's got a real nice fire pit, you know, kind of really uh, kind pretty. Kind of rustic, I like it. Kind of rustic. And we can go ahead and take a look at our services here. So pretty standard, you get 30 amp and 20 amp. Those are the breakers. You don't have 50 amp though, right? Don't have 50 amp here. Oh, that's nope. interesting. And running the auto former, there's our sewer hookup, which is kind of pretty nice. We'll have to get probably 20, eh, my two feet of hose there, two lengths of hose. I carry 20 feet of Or we hose. can pull forward right or, at the last minute. Right, but you can see as we are, we're kind of we're pretty close. much nose up there. Right, so if, if we had to pull forward, we get in the way of people. 
So let's go ahead and take a walk around Fisherman's Memorial because there's some cool history that we're going to check out here. And so how many campgrounds come with their own signal tower from World War II? How yeah, it's cool hooked right that? up to the park office. It is a park office. Oh, and hey, Rhode Island State Parks, nice touch. Ranger. Your Ranger truck. With a Ford Ranger. It's a Ford Ranger. Pretty nice. Funny. So what was, is now Fisherman's Memorial State Park used to be Fort Nathaniel Green, named after a very famous Rhode Islander in the Revolutionary War. And you can see back here, some of the bunkers are still around. These bunkers mounted 16 inch guns. I don't think they actually ever mounted the guns, but they were designed for 16 inch guns. They also had a number of six inch gun emplacements throughout this area, as well as the signal tower that Cindy just showed you. They were actually there to protect the ingress to Narragansett Bay, which is, you know, Long Island Sound out here. All the beaches there. They didn't want any even submarines coming in. Exactly. And so this was just part of the coastal artillery defense of World War II which is now Fisherman's Memorial State Park. It's very much like the bunker that we spotted in Cape May. Yes, it is very much so. And I, it's disappointing that you can't get into these things. I remember when I was a kid and my dad was stationed at Fort Monmouth, we'd go to Sandy Hook and they had a bunch of bunkers that we were able to check out there. Nowadays, they don't let you anywhere near them. Here's kind of one of the entrances to the bunkers that we just saw over by that campsite there. But we're not, we're, we can go, I think, as far as the fence there because they've obviously mowed this area out. So I think you can go as far as the fence. So let's go check it out. Should be interesting. Oh, this looks like you could drive a pretty big tank into this. Look how big it is. What size vehicle could we drive into this? I don't, know, I don't know, but they would probably drive ammunition in here probably. These were 16-inch gun mounts. I don't think this one ever mounted a 16-inch gun. But um, yeah, if you come in, you can see it's kind of full of graffiti. Inside? Do you think people got inside at one point? And somebody left their boat in there. Oh my goodness. But you can feel the cool air rushing out of here. You know, it just oh, yeah. seems very uh, bunkery and cavey. Yeah, it does. Huh. Very cool. So this is another one of those bunkers that they had here with guns. And this one has a little lookout tower on top. And so we're going to go up and check it out. So you can see from the top of this gun mount, kind of the part of the bay, uh, Long Island Sound is out that way. The entry to Narragansett area is this way. And that's what this gun mount would have protected, protected. against. Yep. And you can see the campground here. There's some clam fields out there. But with regards to the campground, I was talking to a local and they actually said that shortly after VE Day, as the guns were being disassembled, this campground booked solidly for the next 200 years. And you can't get any sites here. <laughs> at least in this section. Right, it seems this is like. 66 through 105. Nevertheless, we lucked out where we're at, and we're enjoying our time here at Fisherman's Memorial State Park, Narragansett, Rhode Island. So we are at Iggy's and we're trying their chowder as well. The first thing I'm noticing is that the bits of potato are much smaller than the ones at Aunt Carrie's, which makes it a little bit more eatable, edible, eatable, edible. <laughs> and so we're gonna give this a shot. I'm thinking this version of the Rhode Island chowder has a little, has more flavor than Aunt Carrie's. Ann Carey's tasted like chicken broth with clams in it, and they had really, really large potato chunks, which made it kind of difficult to eat. This has more fish or chowder flavor, and it doesn't just taste like chicken broth to me. So I would say this is a better version of the Rhode Island chowder than Ann Carey's. Okay, I'm gonna review the stuffies, or the stuffed caw hogs in the shelf. Comes with lemon, so we'll dump a little bit of that in there. I'll probably try a little bit of hot sauce once I get the initial taste. Now there was a price difference. Yes, these were a dollar more than car on carries, but a little bit bigger too. Yep. Softer. 
Mm. It's very, very good. One of the things that comes out a little bit more with these is the tomato flavor. It's kind of on the top there. And, you know, overall, I think it's got a good texture, a little bit softer texture. Well, I think because the other ones were smaller, they tended to get a little drier. A little bit more baked, yeah, yeah. These are bigger, more more. And so they can have a little moist. bit more moist, yes. Yeah. It's excellent. With the hot sauce added to the top of this, oh, this is jackpot. This is what stuffies should taste like and I'm enjoying every bite. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a Rhode Island faux pas thing to put hot sauce, but they asked, so it must be. Mm. Plus we got a little bit of lemon with this. Oh, this it's is so better. good. This is, this is the one that you want to get if you're coming to Narragansett. All right, this last thing that we're going to try from Iggy's is their Doughboy, and they're pretty famous for them because they have them on the sign there. So we're going to give it a shot, and it's coming hot, really hot, out of the bag comes with three types of sugar, cinnamon, powdered sugar, and regular. And so we got the powdered sugar because I was sort of trying it like a beignet, a beignet. Yeah. So I was going to see if they were like a beignet or something different, if they were like the clam cakes. So we're going to see what this is all about. Still steaming hot. Mmm. All right. This is not like the clam. This is not like the clam plate that I had yesterday. This is very much like a beignet. I don't super think you would light, put powdered sugar on a clam cake. Super light, super soft, not heavy like the and doughy like the clam cake yesterday, but very much like a beignet. Excellent. Cindy eventually realized that you should sprinkle powdered sugar over a doughboy as opposed to using powdered sugar as a dipping sauce. Yes, it didn't quite work that way, but I think this is the better solution. We've had some good Rhode Island food, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe so, we need to make our own. Right, we're going to get some local seafood here and it's supposed to be a really good place. And you can tell it's a good kind of local kind of place when the docks are all right there. Yep, they're going to have good access. So it's all going to be with the fishing boats that are right here. And it'll be about as fresh as can be. So we're going to get something to grill tonight. Should Let's be go fun. ahead and do it to it. What are you getting, see? I'm getting some oysters. They're all priced the same, but I'm gonna get a bunch of different ones so we can try different places. So what are you picking out, see? We're gonna get a one of these lovely tunas. So we're gonna eat the, probably tomorrow night. I think we caught some fish and some oysters, so we're excited. So we've taken our oysters out, we've covered them in this cloth, which we believe is a German calendar cloth from 1982 from high school. Nice. Still uh, still going strong. We'll put them in here, we'll shuck them up. Get them on a bed of ice. Ooh, ice is cold. <laughs> you think? Yeah. All right, let's These were the smallest oysters out there. It's kind of dripping rain right now. Not too bad though. Do you have a favorite technique to get into the oyster? Well, you, you get to the hinge and then you... But you have special gloves, right? These are Kevlar. No, oh, you jackpot touchdown already. So you use this to slice. That's the shell. That looks insanely lovely. Not too bad. All right, let's finish shucking the rest of them. Eight more to go. So I'm gonna select two of these oysters and I'm gonna eat them raw. And I'm pretty excited about these because they look amazingly fresh. And I put together a little bit of um, a mignette, I guess is what you call that. And it's a sauce made of white wine. I had a little bit of ketchup in there, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, some dill, some onion, and a little bit of hot sauce, and some garlic powder. So we're going to see how that works out. Sounds wonderful, but still not enough for me to eat raw oysters. I'm going to put a little bit on one and give it a shot. I think that's going to be amazing. Mm. 
absolutely delightful. How were they shocked? They were shocked to perfection. <laughs> you are an expert shucker. <laughs> I'm one good mother shucker. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so we have finished the grill on the oysters and the flounder and we have salad and it's looking spectacular. And you've got some microgreens there to add color. We do have, a, they're wheatgrass microgreens and so they don't have a whole lot of uses. I'm trying to figure out the uses but they're very decorative and I think they need to be mowed. All right, so how about the uh, flounder and the grilled oysters? I'll try the grilled oysters. So these look like they're done very well. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well done to the grill chef. Mm, nice. And the flounder. Very, very good. Spectacular as well. All right. Looking forward to the tuna for our next meal. Nice. So right outside the campground is a little farmer's market. Mm -hmm. What'd yeah. you get? I got a little air plant. You've been looking for one of those for a while, right? I was looking for one that was had some colors to it. And this one's particularly cute. All right, so jackpot. Yep, so I'll just have to find a nice little container for it. Well, that didn't go as planned, did it? No, we were expecting to go to a state beach for a little bit, couple hours, right? Between our uh, respective campgrounds. Right, our checkout time was 11 o'clock at the campground and our check-in time is two o'clock. So we had like three hours, and but- Only 40 miles to go. Right, so we were gonna go to this beach. It was gonna be awesome. Right, and we were gonna have lunch and it was gonna be great, but- uh, and the par Yeah, the parking lot fit like thousands of cars. There were like three, but the dude said you can't bring this trailer into the parking lot. I so. think they were afraid, you know, that people would start bringing their trailers. It would fill the place up and you know, it right. is what it is. So, so we ended up here. At Walmart, Walmart. allowed us to stock up on some stuff. Right. Get ready for the next couple of days. Yep. So we're going to be going to Mystic next. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you've been to Narragansett and what you like the best. Or Rhode Island. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.